For number 11, a nutritionist is looking at the amount of time people spend eating and drinking. Uh, takes a large sample here of people aged 15 or older, uh, gets back their sample mean and sample standard deviation. So the first, the first couple of questions here are just talking about why it's appropriate and okay to build a confidence interval based off of this data. And if we look at um, uh, the book here, it talks about constructing and interpreting a confidence interval for a population mean. And it says some requirements need to be and need to be met. And the first one is that our sample data needs to come from a simple random sample. And the second is that our sample size needs to be relatively small compared to the population size. And this is saying that our sample size is less than or equal to 5% of the population size. And then continuing on the next page, it says that our sample data needs to come from a population that is normally distributed. And if the population isn't, if it's skewed one way or the other or something besides normally distributed, we just need to make sure our sample size is large. And that's based off of the central limit theorem, where if we have a large enough sample size, uh, then we know that the distribution of our sample means will follow the normal distribution. So that's how we'll answer A and B here. Um, a is talking about the population not being normal and being skewed. Um, and because that's the case, the sample must be large so that the distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal. And then B is talking about how there's a lot of people in the country age 15 or older. And so our sample size meets the criteria that it is less than 5% of the population size. And then we are going to actually construct a 90% confidence interval. And stack crunch is great for this. The stack crunch, we're doing uh, the T distribution here because we're doing a uh, confidence interval for a population mean. And we don't know the population standard deviation. And we had the summary data from our sample. Our summary sample mean was 1.72 hours. And our sample standard deviation was 0.52. Our sample size is 1057. And then after that, we want to make sure we're doing a confidence interval at a correct level of confidence. And when we hit compute, it'll give us back the lower and upper limits of that confidence interval. And then in part D, a little bit of interpretation. Uh, we're 90% confident that the interval we created contains the population mean for people in the country age 15 or older. So we shouldn't use it for anything outside of that population. Um, we definitely shouldn't use it for people that are less than 15 years old or people from a different country. It would only be used to estimate the mean, mean amount of time spent eating for people from this country who are 15 or older. And number 12, I'm again gonna solve it using StatCrunch, show you how to do that. It's going to be pretty si similar to the previous one. So this problem's about how many books people are reading throughout the year. So we have a uh, poll here with some survey data. We're finding the population mean, and we don't know the population standard deviation. So it's T stat, one sample. And again, we have summary data as opposed to you know, a spreadsheet full of data. So our summary mean is that our sample came back with the mean of 19.2 and our sample came back with a standard deviation of 20.2 and our sample size in this problem is uh, 1008 and we want a 99 percent confidence interval so confidence interval 99 and then we hit compute to get the lower limit and the upper limit for our confidence interval which is measuring the average number of books read uh, by people throughout the year. The correct way to interpret a confidence interval is that we are 99% confident that the population mean falls within that interval. If we did a similar experiment a hundred times, we would get different samples every time, so different confidence inter intervals every time, but 99 out of a hundred of those confidence intervals would contain the population mean in between the lower and upper bounds. So we're 99% confident 
that this particular confidence interval does contain uh, the number of books read and this was for back in 1972. So then in part B, it's telling us about a recent survey. It gives us new information about the confidence interval based off this recent survey. And here, our 99% confidence interval gives values much smaller. So the way you would interpret that is we're 99% confident the mean number of books read today is in between these smaller values. So yes, it's okay to conclude that people were reading more back in 1972 than they are reading today. And number 13, we're looking at some data here from 12 mothers about the age in weeks at which their baby first crawled. And 12 is a pretty small sample. And so that's what we're addressing first here in this problem, is that if we have a small sample, we need to verify the, that the data comes from a population that is normally distributed and that the sample um, does not contain any outliers. And so to see that the data comes from a population that's normally distributed, uh, we would look at this chart here, which is a normal probability plot. And basically, if all the dots fall within the, within the bounds here on either side of these curved lines, uh, then there's reason to believe that the data could come from a population that's normally distributed. And then for outliers, uh, we look at this box, box and whisks, whisker, excuse me, this box and whisker plot. And as long as the whiskers aren't really long on either end, like really sticking out far, that is what indicates an outlier because the whiskers are drawn all the way to the furthest piece of data in either direction. So a really long whisker indicates there's a piece of data really far away from the bulk of the data that's in the box there. And since we've met those conditions, we can use that sample then to construct a confidence interval for the mean age at which a baby first crawls. And I will do that using StatCrunch. Um, you can copy the data into StatCrunch, Control V to paste it there, and then we're going to go to T stats, one sample with the data, and it's in column of var1 there. Um, and so VAR1 is what I'm using. I'm making a confidence interval at 95% confidence. And so then you get the lower and the upper bound for that, for our confidence interval here for the population mean. And of course, if you wanted to, you could use the summary data um, in StatCrunch. If you calculate from, from your sample. Um, your mean and your standard deviation of your sample, plug in your sample size, you can go that route as well to get the same confidence interval. So question C is saying, what could be done to increase the accuracy of our interval without changing the level of confidence? So basically we wanna make this interval a little tighter, a little smaller, because right now we see it's ranging over about 13 weeks here. So that's our, estimate of the average the mean age at which a baby first crawls 13 weeks is pretty wide uh, one way to get that tighter and smaller for estimate is to lower our confidence to 90 percent or 80 percent lower confidence means a smaller tighter interval but a different way if we don't want to change the level of confidence we can just increase the sample size uh, having a sample size that's significantly bigger than 12 will make a big impact on shrinking our confidence interval and making it more precise, increasing the accuracy. And in number 14, we're trying to estimate the population mean for the HDL cholesterol levels of all females in this age range. And we're trying to find how many people we need in our sample if we want our estimate of the mean to be within two points. Um, and we want 99% confidence. And we have a, a estimate here for what the population standard deviation is based on earlier studies. And we're gonna use that in our formula, which I'll pull up right now, our formula for determining the sample size that we need. And here it is. Um, I'm gonna pull up Excel to actually run those calculations. And so here's the gist of the formula written down. 
I couldn't write the z alpha divided by 2, but um, here's what we want to use. So we need to find the critical z value associated with our given level of confidence. For 99% confidence, that means alpha is 1% or 0.01. We want to divide that by 2. Because we want to find, or we want to split that 1% between the two tails of the distribution. And so we find the critical value that is associated um, with an alpha of 1%. And so then I want to plug in, um, don't round here. Um, actually, I use cell reference. If you do round, uh, you would want to make sure you use a lot more decimals than just two. I recommend uh, six. Uh, but cell reference is the easy way to just refer to that exact number there for the critical value. So take that and multiply it by our population standard deviation estimate that we have. And we're dividing that result by two because we want our margin of error to be two points here for our confidence interval. And then take that entire calculation and square it all and you get um, 335 people we need in the study. Now we have to round up always because you can't have a partial person in your study. And if you did round, this could be thrown off slightly one um, by one number one way or the other, which then your answer would be marked wrong in math lab if it's off by, by one. So um, same with here. We're going to use the exact same formula. We just need to find a different critical z value because um, we're supposing the doctor would be content with 90% confidence. So 90% confidence would then be an alpha of 10%. We split that 10%, that 0 0.1 between the two tails of the distribution, and we get our critical z value. So sometimes this happens in real life. You would prefer to be 99% confident, but maybe the sample size needed to reach that level of confidence is just too large for some reason. So you find the lower level of confidence you can be content with. And as you can see, when you plug in uh, that new lower critical value here, we get a smaller sample size back that we need to reach our lower level of confidence. And in this case, our sample size would again round up, so it's 137.